Howdy folks, hopefully you're having a great day. Uh, Super Turtle 12 here, and today I wanted to do a kind of a room tour of my personal collection, um, only because, you know, times have been, you know, sort of chaotic, and uh, I've noticed something that's uh, soothing for me is, um, you know, watching people's uh, showcases and their collections and their uh, galleries and stuff on YouTube. And I've noticed that helps me, you know, kind of find a center and calm down, especially like at work when things get a little crazy. So uh, I'm just going to give you a little walking tour here of my collection. And um, yeah, I'll just go piece by piece, nothing specific here. Um, but let's let's start here. Uh, this is my uh, kind of my uh, female hero, <laughs> my two my two female heroes that I got here um, have their art prints there. Uh, but it's the XM She-Hulk. And I know there's been some criticism over like her skin tone. Uh, for me, it works. You know, I'm not, I, you know, I know some people say that she's too green. I know there's a sideshow one uh, currently out. Uh, I kind of like her complexion, really. Uh, it's like more, has like flesh tones to it. Um, but this one's great too. I got it for a great price. I think it was like $400, so was not uh, disappointed by her. And I don't know if I'll get that sideshow one. I'm still on the fence about it. I guess it would have to get like uh, free shipping or something rather for me to get her in. Um, next one is the Power Girl. She's a great statue. I had sold her. Uh, I had the regular edition and I was able to get the uh, exclusive for about 400 bucks too. Um, so I got really lucky on both of these pieces and don't plan on selling them anytime soon. Um, I also kind of try to put uh, some posters and art prints up here too, um, you know, just to, and some comics around the door, you know, just to add to a lot of the, I have like a high ceiling here. It's like really high. So just to kind of fill that void. Um, but uh, let's keep going here. Oh, these are just some of my books and games and comics, things like that. Uh, it's things I, you know, do in spare time. Uh, the Sumi Art Vegeta is really awesome. I'm actually, I want to turn it on. I want to turn it on for you. So hang tight. Got to just reach around here. Don't mind me. And there we go. So he lights up and he's, he's, pretty, he's pretty awesome. Um, uh, I remember I was in vacation when I got I put, I was on you know wait list for him and ho thankfully I got an email that says you have 24 hours to commit to this and I was like heck heck yeah um, I think I paid like 700 for him um, so he was the most expensive statue I had gotten I had to pay him in payments and but he was well worth it uh, if you can find this guy pick him up I think I did see some bootleg or recast of him like a smaller scale uh, I know I've seen this theme or this kind of effect on a smaller scale being sold somewhere else. Um, he's a really great piece. Um, right now my only Vegeta that I think I need uh, in terms of a statue. So he's great. Uh, they got the Akuma, the Summer, I think Summer Demon Akuma. He's just so ripped. You know, God, look at that back. Damn, amazing. And then a uh, cool thing here, because when I, when I see people post this guy, I always think, oh wow, this is all you know, cloth and whatever. Th this is actual uh, like hemp rope. This isn't. So this is actually sculpted. I, I super thought this was actual hemp rope and stuff, but it's not. Um, the kind of garbs here are um, cloth. The ropes aren't surprisingly, and these kind of like thigh guards are not, but I think he also turns on. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I he was on sale. I guess people didn't like that it was this version of him, but I, I love the kind of like blue and the, the kind of almost like Super Saiyan God mode that he can do. Just really different and even if you don't know it's Akuma, it's just a cool piece to have I think in in uh, a collection. Uh, Player 2 Kami got the exclusive. Uh, really really good statue. The only thing that's an issue though is that hair. Dear God, you wouldn't, if you have her you probably know what I'm talking about but that hair just extends so far out. Uh, it's always a hassle to deal with but uh, the musculature on the legs is, you know, spot on. Love it. And also love King's back. It's something to do with the backs. God, just so much detail in those shoulders. God, just amazing detail there. Um, King, he's one of my favorite, if not the favorite, uh, Tekken character. I'm terrible at him. <laughs> uh, I like playing Stephen Fox myself. You know, I love his combos and, you know, his counters. Uh, but King is an amazing uh, statue as well. I didn't get the exclusive. The exclusive has like a ringside thing. 
But I did notice um, it was uh, it would get cracked a lot in some of the reviews I saw. So that was some uh, some issue there. But uh, in case you're wondering, um, these two pieces are pop culture shock, and this is first four figures. Uh, you'll see another piece I have of them uh, later. Uh, obviously, my favorite superhero, right, Wolverine, and also his daughter, uh, Laura Kinney, X-23. Um, let me kind of get close to her so you can see my little shrine to them. And I got some Mezcos here, uh, you know, the Ronin. Uh, I got some, uh, uh, what do you call Marvel Legends. I got that, what is it, Marvel, I, I, I guess Diamond Select unmasked over there. And I got some tiny little Heroclix Wolverine I pulled off and Dice Masters, if you guys recognize those. Uh, I don't think they make them anymore, but uh, it was a fun game. But um, Laura Kinney came out great. Um, you know, I was really surprised, you know, that face sculpt was always like, I don't know, it's going to be like the prototype, but it was. And I'm happy to have gotten her. I actually have the exclusive. I just haven't put that head on there yet. Um, so, yeah, love it. Love it. Oh, and just FYI, that art print there, oh man, I forgot the company. Good Lord, you probably recognize it if you see it, if you know what it is, but it's a wood print. Um, oh my goodness, I think they're called uh, Ukeo Heroes. Oh no, I, I, I'm, I'm killing it here. Goodness gracious, but if you can find them, I think, I think they're called like Ukeo Heroes, something rather, and they make um, wood print style um, artwork, so really, really awesome stuff there. Okay, moving in here, we have our kind of like our Japanese figures. Um, obviously, my two favorite villains from Dragon Ball, Broly, the Hulk of uh, Dragon Ball Z, and um, Frieza. So, yeah. You know what? If you can get a cool LED behind this guy, he would look so awesome. That's something I, I always wanted to try. I just don't have like a, a cabinet yet. I feel comfortable putting LEDs in there yet and, and putting that, but I bet you that would look great. Um... This Frieza here, this uh, second form Frieza, uh, I don't know, I don't think you can see it in this light, but um, he's got like a dome thing, <laughs> a dome thing. Ah, oh, I can't get it in there. Come on. Ah, uh, well, you can kind of see his brain. It's kinda, it looks kind of gross. Um, you can kind of see his brain right there. You can kind of see his brain, like his dome. And I think that's amazing. That's this awesome detail to me. And I had to buy that one right away as soon as it came out, so. Um, I think this is the Bandai one. This is just like the $20 figure. This is like the $50 Frieza. Alright, so moving down, this is a very special piece that I have. Um, this is the, actually let me go like this so you can see uh, the scale here. Let me kind of back up. Um, but these over here are quarter scale statues, right? All these here are quarter scale, uh, uh, yeah, quarter scale. I don't even know what scale this is, but you can already see she's like almost like a half scale statue. Um, this is the female Titan from Attack on Titan. I think she's also named, uh, oh, I think Annie, Annie Lionheart something rather. Um, but this is a, a gorgeous piece and I don't know who makes this sadly. Um, I bought her on, uh, I think it was Amazon for 500 bucks. Um, this was like maybe in 2015 and um, the box was actually destroyed by the time it got here, but uh, in case you like feet, because that's that's your thing. Uh, but uh, really great piece. She's really really heavy though, so every time I move her, I got to be careful. It's like moving a child. But I just want to show you the back, and like I said, that might be my thing is backs. I just like the way that you know all this musculature and the traps are there, and just amazing amazing sculpt work there for a statue this size. Very cool. So if you know who makes her, let me know because I've never seen anyone else post anything about her. I do have a review of her at, at some one of my older videos. I don't know which one, but yeah, very cool uh, statue of her. All right, so let's shift this way. And here we are. This is like my female gallery here. Um, still in the works. We got some blank space, some stuff that will be filled later. Um, but we got uh, Machiko here. These are actually all sideshow pieces and I'm trying to make this like a warrior <laughs> top shelf here. And I have a Prime One Guts waiting to come in and he's gonna fill that slot right there. So I'm excited for that. But anyway, um, Machiko, uh, great, great uh, sculpt work here on the armor. 
You see the little alien motif there. Uh, and this is a human, okay, in case you don't know her story. Um, she came out in a novel I read, oh, years ago, back, probably back in high school. Um, forgot what it was called, but it was like one of the first alien predator novels. And uh, it was awesome. It was uh, great to read. So, oh, man. I mean, if you like if you like xenomorphs, awesome. They're cool aesthetically. The Geiger, you know, aspects, great, wonderful. I just, I just love predators. I'm sorry. It's my thing, you know. Uh, we got Red Sonja, also from Sideshow, and uh, this isn't the exclusive. The exclusive came with like a cape, I believe, like a tattered cape. But I, I told myself, you know what, I can just probably make one myself and I can I can take care of that. Um, but love the blood work here. Very nice. Um, I'm kind of going to peek back here, not too much because I don't want to get like flagged <laughs> or anything. But that uh, is actually pelt behind her. This isn't, this is all just, you know resin sculpted but that's actual pelt behind her and that face is just gorgeous that portrait so much like pride you know like oh i killed these guys very cool last but not least here we got kier valkyrie of the dead and if you just look at that mirror in the background you can see where she used to have her wings that were like ripped off and i i but here's the cool thing i have seen a prototype of a smaller figure like a 112 scale figure where she has these like blue ethereal wings coming out. So I'm even wondering if one day, it may never happen, who knows, but if we get another quarter scale version of Kier with these ethereal wings, I'm pretty sure that'll be like $700 or God knows how much prices will go up, but um, I would probably get it. You know, I used to have the first Kier and that was a shame losing her. Uh, had hard times back in like 2015, had to sell a bunch of stuff um so i'm happy to have gathered you know a, a version of kier back so that's awesome kind of going down here just make sure i don't block the the light here um got some other uh figures here i got kier again but i i painted this to be like a like she's drenched in blood with gold armor she's got some like a soul blade kind of thing going here so very nice we got i think her name is Sh sial x-i-a-l-l Sial, Shal, you know, however you want to pronounce it. Really great. For 80 bucks, I'm like, awesome. I don't think I paid 80. I think she was on sale when I bought her. She was like 50 bucks. So if you have a chance to get these and you like like the macabre and the kind of like underworld-esque vibes, pick these up. These are great pieces. And I would even say if you're into paint work, if you want to like custom paint stuff, pick up two. One to display and one to repaint. Because this one, was actually really fun, a treat to repaint her skin tones and her armor. It was really enjoyable to do. Yeah. And speaking of custom work, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this is a very controversial figure for me because uh, it was a Kotobukiya uh, figure. It was part of their new Marvel, I think, premium line or whatever. And she was like this really, really dark green, like this really... I don't want to say a grotesque green, but it was a very um, saturated green. Um, and I just, did, it didn't vibe with me. And given like her, her girth or her musculature, um, I felt like, you know what? I don't think that represents the She-Hulk that I like and enjoy it. But, you know, I wanted to get the figure um, just to collect, you know, this uh, kind of like new collection of She-Hulks they're making. So I repainted her to the, you know, the gray She-Hulk that you see back here. Uh, and I think she came out pretty dang well, you know, and in front of her is the Marvel Legends version trying to kind of reminate, you know, Bruce Banner pose. So that, that's a, that was a nice treat to paint. Um, down here, we got our lady friends. Uh, we got Harley Quinn and Ivy. Um, this one retailed for, I think, 180 or, or you know what? She was like 200 if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> they were like the price of a 1-6 scale figure. So now that they've gone down in price, but it's a great figure. I know some people are like, I don't know about the face or the eyes, but um, it is an outstanding piece. And I, I mean, I don't want to say like, oh, I know everything, but I think this is the only piece where you have them both together like this. Uh, I could be wrong. Cause it could be like a Boeing design somewhere that was made a long time ago. I don't know, but really cool treat there. We've got Asami and Korra from Mondo. Solid piece. W weren't many of uh, these characters made. So very cool there. Uh, Galko chan uh, it's just a cool, <laughs> very cool character uh, for your stressful days. There you go. 
uh, Catra from Shira. Oh, and speaking of Shira, I actually ordered the Hordak um, that was made by Twitterhead. It's like a continuation of the Sideshow line that they made. Um, so that, that's actually really cool, and I was very excited to uh, see that piece. Uh, so, oh, anyway, let's keep going. Uh, we got the, uh, I guess, DC series Supergirl, and this is actually really cool. Uh, um, I've seen a lot of statues of her, and I feel this has the best likeness. And, I mean, you can chalk it up to, hey, well, it's not exactly like her, but um, I think it's pretty damn close. We got over here, Batgirl by, um, oh, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on his name. And he comes here. He comes to our El Paso Comic Cons. Oh, my gosh, I'm blanking on your name, brother. Um, oh, goodness, if I can remember, I will probably put it in the comments below. Okay, so let's keep going here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so here we have the uh, Nightmare statue. Um, this is a very large piece, and, and not because he's tall, because he's actually like not too tall. I mean, if we look at perspective here, um, I guess Kira looks taller because she's on a slightly elevated, you know, the cabinet's larger, and she's standing on this thing. Um, but he's not like too tall, but the base is what makes it look uh, large and um, I, I do have issues with the base uh, I feel like this was Supposed to be fire at some point Like I feel like this was supposed to be like flame or something and at some point they're like no 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 Let's 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 reuse this. Let's make it like part of the castle because this architecture doesn't really make sense um, And I've been meaning to maybe go I, I've been wanting to go back and repaint this, um, but I just haven't had the guts to do it. I'm trying to, you know, work with smaller pieces first. Um, but he is a gorgeous piece beyond the, the base. This guy's amazing, and um, his eyes do glow. Let's see if I can uh, hone in on that. <clears throat> his eyes do glow. Gosh, and I just love that helmet with those like rabbit ear things. Oh. Looks great. And then that arm. That's so gnarly. And I got the little one. The, I guess, OG, or I, you know what? I don't want to say OG. I, I think he's from the first Soul Calibur, but you all probably know more than me, so you let me know. Oh, and real quick, before I cut the take here and, and do more, <laughs> this is where they decided to put the, <laughs> the battery to turn off the lights for some reason. I, I, I don't know why. But yeah, that's where they decided yeah, to be here. Batgirl by, um, oh, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on his name. And he comes here, he comes to our El Paso Comic Cons. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on your name, brother. Um, oh goodness, if I can remember, I will probably put it in the comments below. So here we have the uh, Nightmare statue. Um, this is a very large piece and, and not because he's tall because he's actually like not too tall I mean if we look at perspective here um, I guess Kira looks taller because she's on a slightly elevated, you know, the cabinets larger and she's standing on this thing um, But he's not like too tall, but the base is what makes it look uh, large and um, I, I do have issues with the base uh, I feel like this was supposed to be fire at some point like, I feel like this was supposed to be like flame or something. And at some point they were like, no, 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 let's, let's, let's reuse this. Let's make it like part of the castle. Cause this architecture doesn't really make sense. Um, and I've been meaning to maybe go, I, I've been wanting to go back and repaint this. Um, but I just haven't had the guts to do it. I'm trying to, you know, work with smaller pieces first. Um, but he is a gorgeous piece beyond the, the base. This guy's amazing. And um, his eyes do glow. Let's see if I can uh, hone in on that. <clears throat> his eyes do glow. Gosh, and I just love that helmet. With those like rabbit ear things. Oh, looks great. And then that arm. That's so gnarly. And I got the little one. The, I guess, OG, or I, you know what? I don't want to say OG. I, I think he's from the first Soul Calibur. But you all probably know more than me, so you let me know. Oh, and real quick, before I cut the take here and, and do more, <laughs> this is where they decided to put the, the battery 
to turn off the lights for some reason. I, I, I don't know why. But yeah, that's where I decided to put it. Alrighty, folks. And I, gotta get, I had to get some water, so <laughs> excuse me for the, the edits. But um, all right, so here is the 1 6 scale shelf. And I'm shooting this at night to try to get some better lighting. Because uh, this glass is just very reflective and it, it's not going to do it justice. It's better if you see it in person. Um, but uh, I got, you know, and, and it's all a mixture of everything. You know, we got the Hot Toys uh, Robocop, Hot Toys John Wick, Hot Toys Briarios. And then these two here are customs, the Furiosa and the, uh, what's her name, uh, Judge Anderson. These are both, um, I don't want to say customs, but they were unlicensed products and uh, they came out really well uh, the only thing with Furiosa though is her head sculpt did not come um, painted so I had to actually do that paint work uh, and it was wasn't too hard just getting like some black acrylic and kind of adding some watercolor to it and then we got Robbie the robot I found him at Walmart of all places for 20 bucks and he talks and he and uh, he's a great figure if you like throwback um, uh, like tech robots things like that pick him up at Walmart 20 bucks Okay down here. We got the hot toys Wonder Woman uh, Training version. I think she had the best head sculpt out of the ones we've gotten obviously the Golden Wonder Woman the kingdom come Wonder Woman has an amazing head sculpt But I don't know if I'm gonna pay 300 bones to to pick her up. So I, I You know to each their own Right, and then I got the, uh, I think it's 3-0, uh, the Hound. And he's an amazing figure, and he is extremely lightweight. Oh, this, this glass is killing me. And I think this is Joan of Arc, also a unlicensed uh, kind of a statue. Came with two hip sculpts, but one came all ruined, so I, I couldn't use that one. Uh, we got, uh, I think, Asmus, no, yeah, no, yes, Asmus Theoden, yes. And uh, he's cool. Uh, oh, that, that glare is just diabolical right now. Oh, man. And, and all this is, is, is stuff I still have to work on, guys. These cabinets and stuff. But um, really great piece. The only thing I, I don't... If I had to critique him, it would, I would have to say it's that he's, it's hard for him to stand. Because that skirt he's wearing is heavy. And it's, very, it's rigid. Um, it's not flexible at all. So sometimes it's hard for him to stand. And then his armor is not attached to his body. So when you're adjusting him, his head will, or if he has his hair, because you can switch the helmet with the hair, the hair will just pop off because uh, the armor just kind of pushes up on his head and the hair is long, pushes it off. So, But other than that, really great piece. And I, I had to get him. I, I love that character. So, All right, moving down here, we got our Star Wars figures. Uh, we got the all, well, this is Sideshow. This is the Mythos. Obi-Wan, uh, very nice figure. Uh, love his backpack. I don't know if you can see more of his backpack back there. Ah, man. We gotta get better shelves for these guys. They deserve better shelves. Uh, we got Force Awakens Ray, which is my favorite Ray. Um, I did have the, what is it? Um, is it the Last Jedi Ray? And I really liked her outfit. The only thing I didn't like is that her, the Last Jedi Ray, her hair, was like tearing into the suit, like the cloth that was around her neck. And it was really hard to pose her like that. Uh, then we got Hobo Luke. But honestly, I, I love the, the design of him. I know the character was kind of like dragged to the mud or, you know, it's different opinions on, on you know, how people feel about him. But I just liked his look. Um, I had the choice of getting him in the crate version. I liked this one just because I feel like you can tell a story with the backpack and um, it makes for good shots later on just he's more like a wanderer which I, I do like kind of fits the theme here like scavenger-esque uh, and then down here kind of have my my little misfits we have um, Asmus Gandalf and he looks better in person here he looks kind of odd but I, I also did a video on him and the Guan Yu uh, both of these are tremendous figures I don't know who made the Guan Yu you would have to go back to that video um, but this is the uh, snow trooper from side, not side show, uh, Hot Toys. Um, and it's a really great figure. Um, I actually got him for 80 bucks. He just didn't come in a box. And uh, I gotta say, I, I like him. I like him a lot. And 
Um, I'm gonna get a head sculpt so I can replace the helmet with the head sculpt and make it look a little terrifying. Um, so that's something I'm gonna do later on. All right, Ooh, let's move up. Okay, so we're nearing the end here and uh, up here, um, my misfit DBZ characters, more Broly's. Uh, there's Broly with no protein, Broly with protein. Uh, <laughs> and then my Vegeta's. Um, but behind them is what I want to talk about. Uh, these NECA quarter scale um, figures here. And these are amazing. And they were like $100 each. You know, and it makes me wonder when I see um, other figures that are this size that go for more. Um, for example, and, and, and I'm not calling people out, but it's just, like I said, my perspective. Because I know Mezco does the same thing. Mezco pieces go for about 80 bucks. And then they resell for like hundreds of dollars, right? Um, but like with Mondo, I know Mondo has like an animated Batman series, and those are like 165. And I, I guess you can chalk it up to it's it's more like colorful plastic. Um, that could be it because these guys are mostly green. But they did come with a bunch of hands. Like I have a like a box full of just their hands and accessories. Um, but I don't know. Just just my opinion on on kind of like. Uh, price points there My uh, predator collection here and I gotta get like some lights and stuff guys I think that's the improvement I gotta make here in my collection because I've seen everyone has like wonderful setups and lights and crazy stuff And I think that's the next step for me uh, So I have all kinds of predators old and new um, You know I, I the only critique I have on the NECA predators which are pretty much all of these except for this beast back here this is the Play Arts Kai. I think he was called like the Onin Predator or something. And, and he's monstrous. He's, he's the same height as the, what do you call this guy? The Hunter Assassin Predator. Uh, but he's just much wider. And uh, he has, I think this is the open mouth one. You can have one where he has like a guard around his face. It's more like a helmet. Uh, really cool, really cool stuff. But um, no, I, uh, my only issue with the NECA ones is that Sometimes their waist joints and their leg joints um, are loose, so they like dangle over time and they just become impossible to stand. Uh, some people are like, oh my God, you don't have any stands on these? And they panic. And, I mean, you know, it takes time, you know, to put them like this. So uh, that's my only critique with those. But for 25 bucks or, you know, $28 per, it's a beautiful purchase. All right, we've got our Godzillas here. Uh, kind of all walking in the line uh, by height wise got our little chibi ones um, Mecha Godzilla, I think his name is like Kir Kirio or Cairo. Please make fun of me in the comments for <laughs> skewering that name um, But he's amazing. I love him. I actually Mecha Godzilla has always been one of my favorites oh, This is mouth open. Oh, I can't do it with one hand. Oh You heard my comment. Yeah All right, so uh, anyway that's uh, SH Figuarts, SH Figuarts, Godzilla, the 2016 one. And then we go to NECA, which I think is superb. The stuff that NECA makes is amazing. These two are NECA. And uh, I know Players Kai came out with this one, and I was just, no, no, this, this one, this is, he's chunky and he's heavy, and he's just how I imagine he'd be. King Kong versus Godzilla version, and uh, my favorite Godzilla. Um, we got the burning... Well, my version of Burning Godzilla, this is actually a model kit um, that I made. And pretty happy with the way he came out. Um, but uh, that's one I made. And then this Shin Godzilla. Oh. Uh, if you're one of those people like, wow, that's amazing. Look a lot. Uh, I paid 300 bucks for him. And he was the Rick Boy exclusive of the, what is it, X Plus series. And I just, for $300, I just felt like, you know what, you could have just maybe casted this in, in gray for me and I could have painted him. Uh, I, I don't know, I just he just didn't do it for me. So much so that I, I drilled a hole in his tail to put LEDs so now he lights up. Oh, I can't do it right now because he's not connected to anything. But um, I don't know, it just that's just my opinion though. Some of you might see that and be like, that's amazing. But to me, I'm like, ah, for 300 bucks, uh, I wanted something a little bit more. Um, I'm not gonna go too much in detail here guys in the bottom, but um, My pop collection such as it is I used to have a lot more and then 
they just never stopped making them. So I just could not keep buying them. It's just what I have right now. I don't think there's anything rare in there. Just probably general RAM, maybe the Arbiter. Um, but up here, my my Wayward Sons, I got Bezelmon, and he's oh, excuse me, he's incredible. You know, I love this character, and when they made this guy, I had to get him. And again, another piece that would look good with light, but I don't have any lights. Ah, <sighs> the tragedy. Uh, over here, folks, I have, let's walk over here. Let's take a seat. This Master Chief. Now, if you have a keen eye, you'll recognize where this is from. And you'll also recognize this is just a big plastic toy made by Jack Specific. <clears throat> this was made uh, for Toys R Us, I believe. Could have been sold in other places. But uh, it came in a very toy green, like like uh, Halo 1 green. And I was like, oh no, like, ooh. you know, I, I couldn't have that. So I took him to work and over at work, I slowly started to paint him up to what you see now where he has more scuffs on him and his visor is actually reflective. It has like this really nice gold Vallejo paint on it. Um, so this was a, a really fun project to work on and I'm happy with the way he uh, came out. Big old feet. All right, folks, so I uh, got my bookshelf there, got some art books, some manga, some Warhammer novels in here. Um, just random gifts people have given me, Pikachus, people, you know, I, I love Pikachu. You know, I like the chunky Pikachu, Detective Pikachu is cool, but uh, that's the little, like, tokens people have given me. And turning about, we have our 112 scale um, diorama here. A lot going on, so I'll try to pan slowly and talk about uh, some of these pieces. Uh, there's so many. Uh, <laughs> you, you're going to see NECA, you're going to see uh, SH Figure Arts, you're going to see Figma, uh, you're going to see uh, NECA figures. Mm, there's some ninjas in there from ah, that company. I forgot what the company is called, but they specifically make like, I think they're called Fush. Fush, I think. And they make ninjas. There's a couple of Gwenpools there. I think Medicom Gwenpool and Marvel Legends Gwenpool. That Reinhardt. Oh, I'm so glad I got him. Uh, I don't know who made him though. There was McFarlane. Junkrat. Some of these old Halo figures by McFarlane as well. We got Eleven by McFarlane. And then uh, a sad, very sad, somber looking um, Rovaltech uh, uh, Jesse. There you go. And I don't know, I don't like to pose them like they're fighting, per se. I think just everyone having a good time, you know, hanging out at the kitchen. And then right below them, and uh, this is where I, I, if you're making it this far into the video, this is where I might do more in-depth stuff later on. Uh, obviously with better setup than I do now. But this is all my Warhammer stuff, and there's so much here. I got like Nurgle, Nagash stuff, I got... Tau, which I love, but everyone hates. They just get memed all the time. Space wolves or furries, whatever you want to call them. So, yeah. Let me kind of go up. Um, some more stuff I've painted over the years. You can kind of see some stuff like Cthulhu and uh, some uh, Dark Soul stuff in there. And I'm not going to go too in detail with this right now, guys. This is Maybe I'll do something later where I'll review my paintings and critique them whatever but yeah that's my uh little uh display shelf there and the end here this last part uh we got this right side to do but there's not much left here this is my kind of gallery wall it's all blank like i said this this used to be like a uh, basement not a basement oh my god I live in El Paso, Texas, guys. That's like right. It's like between Mexico, Texas, and New Mexico. It's this weird place. But uh, this used to be a garage. I'm sorry, and it just has these high walls and ceilings and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's my kind of my art wall. My predators here. Celtic is always my favorite. Even though he dies, you know, I like that he went out like a badass, kind of fist fighting <laughs> the xenomorphs there. Um, this is a custom piece I did. Uh, just wanted to do like a blue predator with some gold. 
So uh, it was quite fun to do. And moving to my right, you'll see Yorm the Giant. Uh, this is by Play Arts, no, no, not Play Arts, oh my goodness, what am I talking about here? Pure Arts. It's by Pure Arts, and he's just a magnificent piece, guys. He's, he's a gorgeous piece, and he just, uh, I don't know, he just screams like lore and mythos. and um, Very tragic character. If you don't know who he is, Yorm the Giant. Uh, very sad story, but, you know, it's kind of like a good tragic story. You know, it's one that you like to listen to, and, and you know, it's, it's kind of defeatist, but, you know, it, you, know you, you just, I think you're attracted to uh, tragedy sometimes, like with Iron Man, like when... Or Peter Parker when he died in the film, you know. But with Yorm, it's a lot worse because you you murder him basically in the game. So, all right. So, coming about, this is my workbench. This is where I do all my like uh, paints and stuff and um, kits, kit bashing, whatever unboxings. Uh, we got the Marvel Gallery Venom, which to me is like the quintessential Venom. He's just thick enough to be handsome, and he's just, just tongues long enough to be sexy. I don't know. Uh, we got <laughs> Captain Picard there by, I think, Star I think Star Ace or something, rather, uh, drinking some tea. So, very nice. And it's, all, it's always in, in the lighting with him. Like, sometimes he'll look like Picard, like right there. And if, sometimes when the light's just in his face, he doesn't look too good. Um, just got this today, you know, Captain Marvel. Really great figure. I might do like a little review on her and just, you know, critique her and also say what things I like about her uh, later on. So very cool stuff there. And last, my Gaming Heads collection. Other than the Weta piece back here. Uh, we got Garrus, Tally, Liara. All looking away from the camera because they're camera shy. So we'll start with Garrus. But these were magnificent pieces, guys. I think they were like 350 when they came out. God knows what they are now, but... Uh, amazing pieces, you know, I love them all. And uh, if you play, ever played Mass Effect, uh, man, like this was like the OG squad here. I mean, you couldn't take all three of them, but heck, like they were all awesome in their own way. So these were fantastic pieces and I, I love having them. Um, I'm waiting for them to make Vectra. I think she's the next one they're gonna make from Andromeda. So that's a cool treat. And to finish us off, it's the Weta. Uh, Machiko Kusanagi, or Major, as I like to say, um, from Ghost in the Shell. And this is by Weta. And I think this was like the last statue I ever reviewed. And um, I think the comments were always like, you know, what, what about her face? And I think the lighting and the angle really determines the likeness to Scarlett Johansson. Um, because if you look at her straight, straight ahead she kind of has like this deer in headlights face like ooh, you know she's watching you uh I, I guess you could chalk it up to she's like an android or whatever or a cyborg but there's certain angles where she just looks great and she looks fine and it all depends on the lighting but uh a piece that i like to have and uh, it's it, i wish i could turn her on just the battery i haven't changed it since i reviewed it because <clears throat> i don't always use it um but this bottom part lights up and it just looks magnificent because she's like translucent through some of her limbs so the light kind of goes through uh like i said i did a review of her check her out uh i liked it the piece i had i think originally was had all these scratches but this is a new piece so this was uh fine but yeah guys this was uh, an extended video i had made a previous one but it was much shorter and um i i fixed the quality on it with this one so uh, thank you for watching if you made it to the end of this video. And <clears throat> if you have your own videos uh, of your own collection, let me know in the comments below because that's therapy for me. Um, I don't know about you, but I love seeing what people have and seeing how I can improve my collection. Um, because especially right now with these kind of chaotic times, uh, I think taking care of each other and supporting our communities right now is, is a great thing. And and for us who collect, you know, whether it's whether it's like $700 stuff, you know, or if it's uh, mini mates or something, I think we need to make sure we we uh, kind of find that positive outlet for ourselves. Um, so yeah, um, 
you know, I'm not asking you to share it or subscribe or anything like that. You don't even have to like it. Just like I said, just watching this video, if it entertained you, that's awesome. All right. So folks, um, please have a safe night. Have a great day. And I will speak to you later. All right. And until then, stay super.